<laughs> cruising. Little did you know, YouTube, that I have a brother that's actually faster than me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I had a good coach. <laughs> meet, uh, meet Joseph. I have a, a brother. He lives up in the mountains. We don't get to run too often, so. But, uh, all right, Joseph. What are you running in? Uh, Nike Structure, uh, the 20th version. And yeah, pretty much the same shoe I've been running in for a long time, since uh, version 12. Since, did you hear that? <laughs> since version 12, Joseph's been running in the structure, uh, the stru now he's in the structure 20, but since version 12, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it works for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stick stick to what works, right? That's <laughs> Yep. I I hear you there. Yeah, a lot of good shoes out there, so it's fun to try different ones, but pretty much always come back to the structure. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. And I'm in the Solomon Ultras today. Trying them out on the trails. Haven't worn them in a little while. They feel pretty good. They feel pretty good. I got the Spenco in. So by the way, we're at, we're at Green Mountain in Lakewood, Colorado. Nice spot to go. All right, here come bikes. The foot log, the foot log. All right, gonna talk about this in another video coming right up, stay tuned. Guys, I'm doubling up today, doubling up. What does that mean? Two runs in one day. Now, this is not the question of the day, but if you have any thoughts on doubling, I'd be interested to hear down below. I would not recommend doubling up unless you really, really have a good game plan for recovery and for your overall macro level training uh, Outlook, training plan. So, and part of the reason I am doubling up today is not connected to a training plan specifically. I am doubling up to test out the Ultra Torrens for you guys. I want to put a little more mileage into these shoes so I can give you a full review sooner rather than later. I believe I have only about 20 miles in them thus far, so I want to I want to increase that before I give you my full thoughts. These are the Ultra Torrens 3.5 zero drop shoe. So, let's go out into the streets of Denver six to seven miles and uh, doubling up but again be careful don't don't go out and double up unless you have a game plan all right come on come on
we're back. And we're back. Double dipping today. Double dipping, as I like to say. All right, folks. The Ultra Torin 3.5s. I only have 11 miles in this shoe. I thought I had 20, so not as many as I thought. But listen to this. Uh, I'm all about communication, being clear with you guys, and you guys are listening, and it's amazing, and we're communicating on YouTube, down in the comments, but also on Strava. Listen to this from Etienne on Strava 10 minutes ago. He said this. Here from YouTube. I'm thinking about getting ultras for trail running. I have Solomons, but they are a bit narrow for my liking. I would love to get your input. Etienne, your timing is impeccable. That was, guys, that comment came through on Strava literally 10 minutes ago. This morning, ran in the Solomon Ultras for they these shoes I just checked in the uh, gearbox on Strava. And essentially, these guys have 278 miles. So I have a lot of experience in these Solomon Ultras. And so for Etienne and for everybody else who's wondering, of course, the biggest difference between Ultra and Solomon, uh, well, maybe it's not the biggest difference, but it's the drop. The drop from the heel to the toe. I believe these Ultras are eight millimeter. I could be wrong on that, I'll double check. And then the Ultras are all zero drop. And I notice, even though I've only done 11 miles in this shoe, every time I stop running after putting this guy on, my legs do feel more tired. So keep that in mind if you're considering ultra, but you can put, if you, if you want to look at it glass half full, it might mean that our legs are getting stronger. Now I wasn't planning on comparing Solomon versus ultra tonight, but I will because you ask at the end and keep the questions coming everybody. I will do my best to answer your questions, whether it's through a comment or through an actual video. I have noticed that whenever I wear this ultra, my legs are more tired. They, I can feel it. I can feel the zero drop. I can feel my Achilles just a teeny tiny stretch, which I think is a good thing. Now, you can look at it glass half empty or glass half full. Because my legs are more tired, maybe that means I'm getting stronger. I don't know, because I'm using my calves more, my soleus, my Achilles, all, everything. I don't know. I haven't put enough miles into the shoe yet to feel a difference. I would be personally a little nervous to wear ultras out on the trails because usually when I go out on the trails, I'm going out for eight miles, 10 miles, sometimes 20 miles, 25 miles. And my legs are already tired enough from just running that adding a piece of gear that's gonna make my legs more tired. Mm, mm, I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm not, now listen, I've only been running on the roads in the Torin 3.5 and I, so I'm not an expert with ultra, but that's just my assessment so far in this shoe. And then with respect to Solomon and the narrow feel that you have, uh, if you do have a narrow foot, I would lean away from Solomon. I just would maybe look at Hoka and Solomon. It's just, it's such a different kind of running shoe. Very aggressive. I would, I would put all Solomon shoes into the aggressive category and a lot, a lot more stiff which, you know, if you see like most of their marketing and branding for Solomon, they're filming runners like in the Alps in Europe or in the Pyrenees or like they're filming runners going up huge mountains because they want to really target that audience and that market. And therefore their shoes, I believe, are designed specifically for that mountain running. Now they do have road shoes, which kind of baffles me a little bit. I really do think that Solomon is a great shoe for that more aggressive mountain running as compared to like the Lone Peak, which I do not own the Lone Peak, but I've heard you could take the Lone Peak, the Ultra Lone Peak out for 15 miles and just feel great if, if you, you are used to the zero drop feel. And one last thought on the Solomon. Basically last week I said, I have never thrown a pair of Solomon running shoes away because they are so well built. Now they're a little heavier and a little little more stiff than a lot of other running shoes, but they, the build quality of Solomon is, it's just second to none. Now you're gonna pay for it up front. They are expensive. Like I think these guys might've been about $180, but I've, I've got 280 miles in the shoe basically, and there's no sign of breakdown on the upper except for a teeny tiny little bit by the pinky toe here and maybe a little bit by the big toe just a little bit of a hint of a potential hole forming there but bottom line build quality on point solomon so you're going to pay for the price up front but I, 
you're just gonna get hundreds of miles out of these shoes no matter like they're not the upper is not gonna tear on you like I hate to say it but like Hoka I've had a lot of I've, I know a lot of people that have had issues with Hoka shoes breaking down in the upper specifically right here uh, you probably know what I'm talking about if you're a Hoka runner in conclusion I don't know if I would go with ultra for long distance trail running Unless you can build into it and you have the patience to build into it and it could take six months to build up your leg strength. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have enough experience, but thus far in the ultra, I'm feeling tired after the runs in my legs. So far, we'll see what happens moving forward. And then in the Solomons, of course, it's aggressive. It's aggressive. And I love it for the mountains, for the uphill efforts, for the let's go crush the Pikes Peak Ascent type of race. Um, I don't even know if I'll if I'll buy another Solomon uh, Ultra shoe. Frankly, it's almost not quite aggressive enough for the uphill mountain runs. Uh, so anyway, anyway, those are my thoughts for now. For now, and yes, the keyword of the day is double, double trouble for double dipping on today's run. First in the Solomons, second in the Ultras. All right, question of the day is coming right up. Hold on though, I gotta set it up by giving you my ranking of popularity of running shoe brands. But this is just me, like I, I did not write this down, I'm just coming up with this really off the top of my head. All right, here we go. Nike at the top, as far as popularity, running shoe brands, and of course, you're probably, you might disagree, let me know down in the comments, and I might ruffle some feathers here, but that's okay. YouTube, it's a two-way street, we're just communicating here. All right, Nike at the top, why? Two words, Michael Jordan. The amount of money that Michael Jordan brought in to Nike in the 90s allowed them, I believe, to redeploy that cash to invest in other technologies, other sports, like running shoes. So anyway, I'm putting Nike at the top because of Michael Jordan, not because of, you know, any other runner, but it's, it's MJ. It's MJ. All right, I'm calling it. So Nike at the top. Tier 2, I'm going to go with New Balance, Saucony, and I think I'm going to put Hoka up there. It's maybe not quite, but definitely New Balance, Saucony, and Hoka, all right? Just below them, tier three, I'm gonna put Brooks, even though I think Brooks could actually maybe be in tier two, but I'm gonna put Brooks in tier three. Tier four, oh yeah, and also Solomon in tier three, all right? Tier four, I'm gonna put uh, Reebok and Adidas. Reebok and Adidas, however, I feel like both of them are kind of struggling a little bit, especially Adidas. I don't know, like, I have a lot of thoughts about Adidas running shoes. We'll get, we'll get to that another day. All right, and below Adidas and Reebok, we're gonna go with, um, like, Mizuno and, actually, maybe Ultra. Mizuno and Ultra, I you know, two companies that are just like, they definitely don't have the entire market. However, Ultra, I believe, is on the rise. Did you notice that Kara Goucher, a former Olympian, and also she went to CU, go Buffs, she is now running for Ultra. That's a big deal, big deal, all right? I know that I probably just ruffled some feathers, I apologize, or that I left companies out that I'm just not thinking of right now, um, but, the question of the day. Let's go with it. Here we go. What is a small running shoe company that you have used in the past and or maybe use now that I did not just uh, list off or that people just don't know about? Like, is there any, like, I'm just curious, what is a company out there that we don't know about? Uh, for example, for example, and maybe you were going to comment with this one, but I'm going to steal it right now. Inov, Inov 8, how, I-N-O-V-8. It's kind of an, a unique name. I don't quite get it. I think they're based in Scotland, I believe, maybe. I, I could be wrong on that. Anyway, that's my shoe company that I've never, I've never run in them, but I am interested in them. So comment below. Maybe you have to do a little research on Google to find a company that's like off the beaten path. I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Comment below. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks for running today twice. It was amazing. Oh, I'm a little tired though. Time for bed. Seek beauty, work hard, work hard, and thank you for just, oh my gosh, I'm trying to keep up with your comments. If I don't get to your comments immediately, just bear with me. I will do my best. I'm doing my best. I'm... I got to work out my fingers more. And love each other. See you tomorrow.